Hi everyone and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK tutorial. In this video I'll be looking at the different ways we can add lighting to our runways and the SDK gives us three types of lighting we can add through the properties of the runway object. So first we have the runway edge and center line lighting and these help the pilot identify the runway in reduced visibility conditions or at night. There's then the approach lighting system or ALS for short. These are the lights that extend out from the approach ends of the runway and again they help the pilot identify the runway and align their aircraft with it during landing. There's a range of ALS systems we can use, with varying numbers of lights which convey different information to the pilot. Finally we have the Visual Approach Slope Indicator, otherwise known as the VASI. These are the lights off to the side of the runway that show the pilot whether they're above, below or on the glide path. And there are a few different versions of the VASI in use, but most airports use the PAPI system, which is four lights in a row like you can see here. So in this tutorial I'm starting out with a runway already created. If you need help on that, check out episode 2 of the series for more details on creating airports and adding runways to them. Let's go ahead and select the runway and come over to the properties panel. We'll start out with the lights option. And you'll see we have two drop downs and a checkbox in here. So the drop downs are for the centre and edge lighting. And the values in here are for the intensity. So we've got none, which is lights disabled, and then low, medium or high intensity. So I'm going to set both of these drop downs as high because I know that's the values that this airport use. High intensity, edge and centre lights and you'll see that these got added to the runway like so. Now this drop down here, the centre red drop down, I think is currently not functioning correctly in the simulator. So if I come over to the other end of the runway from the end we were on, you'll see we start getting red lights in between our white lights and then it eventually goes all the way down to full red lights at the very end of the runway. And if I just turn around, you'll see these turn to white on the other side and we have the same effect down that end of the runway. So this is to indicate to a landing pilot that you're reaching the end of the runway and you need to stop. And this checkbox is supposed to enable or disable those lights being interspersed with the white ones, but it doesn't seem to work currently. Moving on, we've got approach lights. So in here we have two checkboxes. These are for the primary and secondary ends of the runway and enable the approach lighting system there. So if I enable the primary light approach system, we can see here we've got our system drop down. In here we've got the different types of approach lighting system. If you need some information on what these actually mean, just give the names a quick Google or Google approach lighting system types and you'll find out the differences between them. So these range from the simple odals, which is just a couple of strobes and rail at the end of the runway, to the Calvert 2 system, which is one of the most complex and has many lights, all conveying different parts of information to the pilot. So I know that on this end of the runway, on this airport we're using SSALS system. So I'm going to select that in the system drop down. We then have a checkbox for a uh, text box for strobes and this is just number of flashing strobes that you want in your system. So some systems have them by default, others don't. So for example if I was set this to two we get two flashing strobes here although you can only see one because currently it's in the ground and I'll fix that in a second. I know this runway doesn't have any strobes so I'm going to disable that. We have a checkbox for end lights, which is uh, the bar across the runway on the threshold. We have a touchdown zone, which is lights on the touchdown zone to indicate where that is. I'm going to disable that because it's not present on this airport. I'm going to skip on ground for a second. We have rail, which are runway end identification lights. They're flashing lights on the end of the runway that you can only see from the approach end of the runway. So if you see as I pan around here, they disappear from view and you can't see them on the other side. So it indicates that this is uh, a runway and this is the correct end of the runway. And before I deal with offset and spacing, I'm going to fix the slope of this approach system. So you can see here, if I zoom in, you might have seen it when I was zooming in there, there's supposed to be lights here. Um, they're gl currently glitching into the ground because there's a small hill here. And these approach lighting systems, they start out in the sim at zero degrees slope. So it's coming off straight on the end of the runway into the hill here. So there's two, two options to fix this. You can either set the slope of the approach lighting system. So for example, if I set this to something like five, which is a crazy slope, you'll see that now we're going up from the threshold at a slope of five degrees. And these lights down here are hilariously tall now, um, which is obviously very unrealistic. Generally, the slope value will be somewhere around 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and that's generally a reasonable value to sit on any hills. And you can see it's only just actually coming across here. So the other option you can do is set this back to zero and then choose the on ground checkbox. And what that does is forces the lights to be sitting on the ground all the way along the touchdown zone and 
um, mapping to your terraforming there. So the final two text boxes that I've glossed over is the offset and spacing. So the offset is the distance from the touchdown uh, line, the threshold line rather, that the first light in the approach lighting system is. So for example, if I was to set this to something small like five, five meters, we can see this is now very close to the threshold. And likewise, if I change the spacing down to five, that's the difference, the distance between every following light. So now we're getting an offset of five meters and then a spacing of five meters. For example, if I set this back to 30, which was the default value, we have a space of 30 meters here and then five meters between each subsequent light. So you can play around with these values to match it to how it should be on your airport, but I'm going to set it back to 30 30 because I think that's a standard value and it works reasonably well for this airport. It's not exactly bang on, but it's good enough. So that's all the settings to the approach lights. I'm just going to quickly flip down to the other end of the runway and show a different type of approach lighting system because this airport actually uses a different one for the primary and secondary ends of the runway. So I'm down here at um, runway 20 on the opposite end of the runway now and I'll just enable secondary light. I'll set this to Calvert 2 which is the secondary lighting system and you can see this is the more complex one. I'm going to enable end lights, leave touchdown zone disabled, leave on ground disabled. This time instead I'm going to set a slope so I'm going to set 0.2 for the slope here which puts the lights nicely because this is actually a downhill slope here coming off the end of the runway. And then I'll leave the spacing again at 30-30. It doesn't fully match up with the satellite imagery, but it's, it's not too far off and it's good enough for the purposes of this video. So that's it for the approach lighting system. Let's move on to the VASI. So we have four drop downs for the VASI. We have two for the primary end of the runway and two for the secondary end. So we can actually have two VASIs systems for each end of the runway if we really wanted to, one on the left and one on the right. Most runways though generally just have one and it's usually on the left side, although that's not always the case, but generally it's the left side. So I'm actually going to just enable the secondary one first since we're down here. And you'll see nothing happens first. It's because the VASI has been spawned at the center of the runway here. If I rotate around you can see those two lights of the VASI. If I tick edit position and move that, We can see we can move the VASI around like so. And if I actually move it towards the correct end of the runway, the lights flip around for us automatically. So I'll zoom back out and drag this over to where they should be. Which I'm going to work out through the satellite image. So if I just make it a little bit brighter here. And click back on the runway. I can see here we've got four dots because this system is actually pappy on this airport, but I'll leave it for VASI for now. So there we go. Make sure you uncheck edit position because otherwise weird things happen. Like now I'm editing the position of this VASI system, so I can't click on my runway because I have to click here. So just make sure you untick that, otherwise funny things happen. So the edit position has just changed the bias X and Z options in here to uh, be in the correct place. You could enter those by hand, but just if you check the edit position, it's much easier. Uh, the next option in here is the spacing. So this only applies to VASI systems or well, any system that has multiple rows of lights. It's the spacing between the light rows. So for example, if I set this to a low value like 10, they get placed right close together. And if I choose, for example, VASI 33, 3, we can see they're close, really close together now. If I set it back to 90 and zoom out, they're spaced 90 meters apart for each light. So obviously that depends on the setup at your airport um, and it's not applicable to Pappy, which is the one that's used at this airport here with the four light rows, uh, four lights in a row rather. The final option is pitch. So this is important to set. If you leave this at zero degrees, the Pappy lights will always be white no matter how low to the ground you go. And that's because you've set the glide slope at zero degrees. You'd have to go into the ground before you start seeing any red lights on your VASI. So if I set this to free, and free is the general direction for glide slope, you can check runway and airport charts to double check that, but it's generally three degrees if you don't know. So now if I rotate the camera down here, you'll see I start getting red lights as I go below the glide slope and then white as I go back above it. So there's many different types of VASI. So we've got the VASI 
with the numbers here and this just dictates the different arrangement of lights so like vasi 2 2 is two lights and two rows vasi 3 1 is three rows one light and so on i think you could work out the rest on your own we've got pappy which is the system that most airports use now so we've got pappy 2 which is just two lights like so and pappy 4 which is the probably most common system i think in use nowadays which is four lights like so and you've probably all seen that before at the bottom we have some more strange ones that i've actually never seen used in an airport before but we've got tricolor which is a single light that changes color so it's orange green red as you go through the glide path you've got pvazi which is just a single flashing light that changes to red as you go below it and solid when you're nearly on it T Vazzy, which is a massive long system you can see the end light here so it's all white and it just changes which approach and they go red when you go really low we've got the ball which is a single one again changing to solid when you get onto it like so so that's the glide path there and we've got APAP which I think is like a normal VASI system I'm not really sure the difference between that and a PAPI 2 um, if anyone knows just let me know in the comment section down below I'd be really interested to know where some of these are used or any airports where they're actually used on so like I said before I can actually see on the satellite image we've got the PAPI lights here so I'm gonna click on edit position again and drag those over um, so they're then correct place as we'd expect and there we go. So I've got a Pappy 4 system with a glide slope of 3 degrees set in the right position like so. And if I swing over to the primary end of the runway we can do the same thing here. So I'll zoom out, enable the primary left VASI, set that to Pappy 4, edit the position on that, drag that over into the right place which is here like so. You can just see, see where the maintenance people come down and change the lights I guess. Um, like so, you could tweak those again using the values in here or the widget, the gizmo. And don't forget to set your glide slope. So I know from the airport charts that the, the primary end of the runway it's actually 3.1 degrees, not 3.0. That's uh, because it doesn't matter when you're this close, but when you're a, a couple of miles out, that probably makes quite a big difference in vertical distance. And that's it. So we've set up approach lighting systems, we set up center and edge lighting, and we set up the fuzzy for our runways. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to see more content like this. If you've got any questions, if there's anything you'd like me to cover in future tutorials, then let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.